Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So this day started seven years ago, roughly, um, via the dating app, Tinder. Um, for those of you that don't know, Tinder is really well known for forming long-lasting <laughs> and respectful relationships. <laughs> I think. Um, I will be forever grateful that Felicity swiped right. So please raise your glasses to Tinder. <laughs> what can I say? I didn't think it was possible for you to look any more beautiful, but when you walked into the church, I was left completely speechless yet again. You may have left me waiting on our first date, a long time, and in the church, slightly less in the church, um, but you're 100% worth the wait. Felicity, you are my best friend, and I couldn't be prouder to stand here and call you my wife. You are the kindest, most caring person I've ever met. Although sometimes you do save your sympathy just for patients at work. <laughs> I realized I wanted to marry you whilst being in New Zealand. The scenery there is beautiful, but I remember being at the top of Roy's Peak. I remember thinking that the only thing that mattered was that you were by my side, making me smile every day. You take absolutely everything in your stride, organizing today, house renovations, even global pandemics, all at the same time, and they're no match for you. You inspire me to be a better person and give me confidence to strive to succeed. My aim is to make you as happy as you make me for the rest of our lives. Felicity, I love you more than I can put into words. So ladies and gents, for the final time, please raise your glasses to the love of my life, to Felicity. I, Nicholas Simon, take you, Felicity Grace, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death do us part according to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. I, Felicity Grace, take you, Nicola Simon, to be my husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. On behalf of my wife Susan, or Sue, Nick's parents, where, where aren't they? Where they? Yep, Sa Sally and Simon, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you all and thank you for coming to share Felicity and Nick. Why, why aren't you together? Um, <laughs> special day. You know, they've only, been, they've only been married for what, three and a half hours perhaps? Not even that. So you've got to be together. In these uncertain times, it is to their credit that they have been able to organise their whole events remotely 
but they make a good team and the love and respect they have for each other is apparent for all to see. I'm sure you will agree with me that Felicity looks absolutely beautiful. The dress is stunning and actually he doesn't look too bad either does he? <laughs> Not really. Sue so and I uh, both like Nick from the moment we met him. He impressed us with his easygoing, quietly confident manner and his obvious love and devotion to Felicity. He immediately became part of our family and as of today it's official. <laughs> I bet you didn't picture your early time together being spent, us three, watching highlights of Burnley Stoke on a Tuesday evening. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great to see you both so happy, um, just like you are today. It's also really nice to see how settled Nick is now. There's always been a middle-aged man in there <laughs> wanting to break out. <laughs> He's a picture of contentment, and it's the happiest I've seen him. So I guess the last thing to say is for everyone to raise a glass to the happy couple, to Nick and Felicity. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like volcanoes and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your roots have so entwined that it's inconceivable that you should ever part. Because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the promulgation of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any fool can do. Love itself is what is left over after when being in love has burned away. And this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots that grow towards each other underground. And when all the pretty blossom have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two.